What's up guys? So today I've got my hands on another powerful mini PC by B-Link. So this is the B-Link SER6 Pro. Now priced just over 550, this thing has pretty decent specs and lots of upgrade options to go with it. Now, first of all, quick look at what you get inside the box. So we have a user manual. You also get a spare top cover this one is finished in red. So if you want to add some character, remove the darker one and stick the red one on. This also comes with a metal mount. So you can mount this PC to the wall or even the back of your monitor and screws are included. You're also getting a long HDMI cable and a short HDMI cable, a power cable, a power supply and I'll give you a close up on the voltage information. And you can see that is a full size laptop power supply. And last but not least, the mini PC itself. This mini PC is powered by the AMD Ryzen 7 6800H, which is an octa-core processor clocked at 3.2 gigahertz base and a 4.7 gigahertz turbo. We've got integrated AMD graphics 680M. This mini PC has 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, that's dual channel RAM, and the configuration is 16 gigabytes times two. And the RAM is upgradable to a maximum of 64 gigs. For storage, we have a 500 gigabyte M.2 NVMe SSD, that is PCIe 4.0, and that can be upgraded to two terabytes max. There is also expansion to add a two and a half inch SATA hard drive. Now this mini PC also features Wi-Fi 6, 2.5 gigabit per second LAN, Bluetooth 5.2, you've got Thunderbolt 4, it comes with Windows 11 Professional pre-installed. This supports triple 4K display output via two HDMI and one Thunderbolt 4. You've got a large internal cooling fan and this mini PC does indeed support 4K at 60 Hertz. So this mini PC has an all metal design with a breathable mesh fabric finish on top. And as I showed you, you can remove the top covers. It says there B-Link SER in the corner. On the front, you've got your AMD stickers. You've got a clear CMOS reset hole, two USB 3 ports, you've got a Type-C Thunderbolt 4, headphone, mic, combo, and a physical power button. On this side, we've got nothing. On the back, we've got a 2.5 gigabit per second Ethernet port, we've got one USB 3 and one USB 2, and we have two HDMI 2.0 ports and a power socket. If we keep going, nothing on this side, and that brings us back to the front of the unit. And this is how the bottom of the mini PC looks. So it does tell you over here how to enter BIOS and how to enter the boot options. All right, so we're gonna have a quick look at the internals. So four screws to remove. So you can remove the back plate. It's made from metal and there is nothing attached. So no worries about uh, tugging on any cables. So first thing you're gonna see is a cooling fan which cools down the SSD and the RAM. You've got a SATA connection here, so you can install a SATA hard drive, but it also says, please do not block. So if you're gonna put a SATA hard drive in there, of, of course it's gonna block that fan. So I'm gonna try and remove this fan cover. It looks like we have one, two, and three screws. Now you can easily just remove the cover, but do be careful because there is a fan connection cable there. So now you have access to the internals. So here's your RAM. You can see the configuration. That's dual channel RAM. It's crucial branded 16 gigabyte DDR5 RAM. We've got two sticks in there to give us 32 gigs, but you can stick 32 in each to give you a maximum of 64 gigs. And there is your 500 gigabyte SSD. You can swap that out for a two terabyte drive, but then you would need to reinstall Windows yourself. So that is pretty much your upgrade options. And as you guys saw, it's fairly easy to access the components. So without any further ado, I'm gonna get this all set up and we're gonna run a number of performance and gaming tests, including emulation. And we're gonna find out exactly how powerful the SER6 Pro really is. I'll be right back. So starting off with a boot up speed test, this mini PC took only six seconds to boot up from a cold start. And we will restart the mini PC again, pressing F7 to access the BIOS page. And I'll quickly skim through all the options available as I know some of you do like to know about the BIOS. And I'm just skimming through all the various BIOS options. I don't wanna to take too much time here as those who are interested in seeing BIOS options only need a quick glimpse to understand what's available to tweak. 
And more importantly, if you want to play games like FIFA 23, which requires Secure Boot to be active, you'll be pleased to know that this mini PC does support Secure Boot, which you can easily switch on or off as required. This is the full version of Windows 11 Professional and I'm connected to my new 4K capture card. So my desktop resolution, as you can see, is currently set to 3840 by 2160, 4K resolution being captured. Now let's check out the main system properties. So as you can see, Windows 11 Professional with the AMD Ryzen 7 6800H, that's 3.2 gigahertz with 32 gigs of RAM, 64 bit OS, and it's already activated and ready to use. Now if we check out the system storage info, we have 500 gigs of internal storage from which 463 gigs are usable and from that we have 422 gigs free to use. And I've not installed anything yet so this is what you begin with. And the second drive you are seeing is my 64 gig flash drive which contains all my 4K samples that we are going to be using in our next test. So let's play some 4K video samples from a USB drive using the default media player and see how it performs. So first video, high bitrate 4K Jellyfish demo, 160 megabits per second is playing nice and smooth. I then tested the 180 megabits per second video sample and that also played very well. And the last high bitrate file, 400 megabits per second video sample also played pretty smooth. So this mini PC is good for high bitrate 4K samples from a USB drive. So next we're playing back 4K60 with HDR from USB drive and you can see the amazing results, colors and contrast just pop. And here is the second sample, 4K60 with HDR10 and again, great looking video. So all video formats, including various HDR formats working fine from USB with the default media player. So I did not even have to install any codecs, everything worked out of the box. So moving on now to some video streaming on YouTube and it does support 4K60 and streaming quality and performance is top notch. Now let me switch on HDR from settings and go back to YouTube. Now you can see 4K60 with HDR is available on YouTube and this is how it looks. Now furthermore, I was actually able to select 8K with HDR on YouTube but unfortunately, my internet connection is not good enough to stream 8K. Now let's go ahead and play a few more trailers. They won't fear it. Until they understand it. This is a stupid rubber doll with fake hair. <gasps> Let go! You need to learn some manners, Brandon. I spent the last seven years of my life living out my wildest dreams. Bianca. So next up, I loaded Netflix from the web browser and I was able to stream a maximum of 4K with HDR. Amazon Prime Video also supports 4K HDR. Dr. Ryan, welcome aboard. Well, I appreciate the lift. And Disney Plus also supports 4K HDR. Dad, we. Jaeger. Dad! You can't survive out there. So, moving on to some gaming, starting off with GTA V. And here are the graphics settings. The resolution is set to 1080p at 60 Hz. We've got VSync off, and graphics is set to overall high. And GTA V, as you can see, is playing super smooth, achieving around 60 FPS average, with the TDP peaking at around 38 watts. I still love playing this game and until GTA 6 launches, this is the game I will be testing on every mini PC. And simply put, if it can't play GTA 5, then it's not worth the dollar. And just to see what happens, I dropped the resolution down to 720p, I left all the other settings exactly the same, so VSync off, and then I maxed out the graphics to very high. And you can see we are still achieving around 75 frames per second average. So very good performance playing GTA V. Now let's go ahead and try something a bit more recent. So next game is WWE 2K22 and here are the graphic settings. So 1080p resolution, the texture quality is set to standard, VSync is off and everything else is set to medium and you can see we are achieving a comfortable 60 FPS average with the TDP going up to 38 watts. 
argument. Razor Ramon doesn't play by the rules, Cole. He plays by his rules. And for Razor Ramon to get the victory here tonight, he has to find that middle ground. Now one more PC game, we are playing Forza Horizon 5, I have the resolution set to 1080p with VSync off and the graphic preset is set to medium. The game is actually playing really nice at 60fps and the TDP is peaking at the usual 38 watts. Alright, so time for some emulation. I am using the Retro Station hard drive and we are running all our emulation directly off that drive. Starting off with PS3 playing Tekken 6, resolution is set to 720p native and we are achieving 60 FPS and the game plays really nice and smooth. <laughs> Next game, God of War Chains of Olympus, again 60 FPS, super smooth gameplay, looks great, love this game, and the TDP peaking at its usual 38 watts. Awesome stuff. So next up we're playing Ultra Street Fighter 2, the final challenges on the Switch and as you can see the game plays pretty good at 60 FPS with only 21 watt TDP and the resolution is the native 1080p. <laughs> Results of the Wi Fi speed test. We achieved download speeds of 56 and upload speeds of 15 megabits per second. And these are typically the top speeds we achieve in our office. So that brings us to our benchmarks beginning with Geekbench single core score of 1542 and multi core score of 9327. And in the Antutu benchmark test, we achieved 879k. So let's see how this compares to the other popular mini PCs. So here is my new mini PC performance chart for 2023, allowing you to compare the specs, features and prices of some popular mini PCs. For the 2023 chart, we are starting off with the last few top of the range mini PCs that we've just recently reviewed. And as usual, I'm sure this list is going to grow throughout the year, especially seeing the popularity of mini PCs. Now all the mini PCs are ranked by overall benchmark scores and as you already know I am constantly updating these charts. So as you can see the new B-Link SER6 Pro has taken position 3 on this chart with an impressive bunch of benchmark performance scores. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online and free of charge at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, that was the B-Link SER6 Pro. Amazing performance from such a small compact mini PC. Not only is this thing powerful enough to run anything you throw at it, from video editing, desktop publishing, web browsing, but it can also play AAA games and lots more. Now this plays most of the latest games out there at 1080p resolution with graphics set to medium or below. This mini PC can easily run all your software like Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere Pro, AutoCAD, 3DS Max, and the list goes on. Ample connectivity and convenient ports on the front. You get triple 4K display output. Really nice to have Thunderbolt 4, 2.5 gigabits per second Ethernet port. Ability to easily upgrade RAM and storage when you need to. Top notch build quality as expected from the B Link brand. Windows 11 Pro comes pre installed and activated, so no messing around. It's ready to use, simply plug and play. 
So to sum this one up, an overall powerful performance, complete bang for your buck mini PC right here. I absolutely love what this thing can do, especially for its current price point. And do let me know in the comments what you guys think of this one. And with all that being said, that's all for this video. Don't forget to like and sub. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.